so yeah, um, as already said, uh, I'm in the team Graph Data Science and uh, working on the Graph Data Science product. And to start off, I uh, want to explain to you what is actually new for JGraph Data Science. Um, maybe you've already uh, talked uh, and heard from Luke of what it is, but here a short summary. So uh, it's new for JGraph Data Science. You can do in-memory graph analytics. So we are taking the data that you might have persisted in a new for J database, or maybe also some other data source, and um, loading it in memory in a very graph analytics uh, friendly format. So there you can then run traditional graph algorithms, which you might already heard of, like PageRank, which is a centrality algorithm. We also have community detection, for instance, Louvain or the path finding uh, like Dijkstra, where you try to find the shortest path between two nodes. Um, so various use cases that we cover there. But uh, what I want to focus more in this talk is uh, our graph native machine learning capabilities. So there were previous talk by Mats and Adam already about um, node classification and node regression, um, which are problems that I won't go into much detail here, but you can um, apply models, for instance, to classify a node. And um, the machine learning part that I want to talk about today is link prediction. And uh, as this is a beginner talk, I will also give you now a short introduction of what actually is link prediction. So um, the, the question is, uh, when you have your graph, so you see uh, on the left side uh, some nodes and the link, um, and the links in between, also called relationships, then you might uh, want to know what relationships uh, will there be in the future, or maybe you, you didn't know yet any data that already exists, but, uh, but likely will be. So um, that part from getting to these new relationships is link prediction, and you can think of different contexts here. So maybe you have a friend network and you want to recommend new friends to people, or it's uh, maybe a user product graph and they want to recommend uh, new items. Um, I'm definitely curious of uh, what you could think of uh, for your problem domain that you're working on, on where you can apply link prediction there. Um, so now that we know what link prediction itself is, let's go a bit more into what link prediction is in the graph data science context. So um, on the left side, uh, we have our input data, which um, is a graph that you also saw before. Then we got a pipeline, which is the um, GDS concept of uh, how you can define your, uh, your machine learning workflow. So how to split your data so that you have a train and test set so that you can evaluate uh, how good a, a certain model is uh, that, that will predict these links. You can also define se several model candidates, um, like for instance, one based on log logistic regression or random forest, that's what we offer at the moment. And then you're putting this pipe pipeline uh, for the configuration and in, into a, a training. So you're using your input data set and the pipeline to then generate a prediction model, uh, which you can see on the right side. And when we get this prediction model, that is basically there to um, to give them two nodes, how likely is it to to predict the link uh, between these nodes? Um, you can apply this on on your data again and get these new predictions that we that we want to have in the, as a result. And uh, so, in this talk, um, I'm not focusing on the training part. Um, there, I would invite you to look more into our documentation page where we have an example, and uh, there also, for instance, on the Python client side, we have, we have a notebook. Um, but I want to focus on how do you, can you use a model and predict new links in a, a scalable way. Um, so to understand of what's actually happening when you have a model and want to find predictions, um, what we're doing is that you uh, choose a pair of nodes, A and B, we are calling it now, um, applying uh, th this node pair to a model, which will then um, return you how likely it is uh, that there will be a, a link between those two. And um, for our result, we want to have the best prediction. So the, the node pairs which are most likely to, to be connected in the future. Um, and in our case, we only care about undirected predictions. So whether the link is from A to B 
or B2A doesn't really matter. Um, we will treat this as the same. And we are skipping existing relationships because obviously existing relationships, they are new, no new links. So we don't want to recommend these to users. Um, so uh, after we understood of what what's actually happening in the prediction part, um, let's let's talk about how does this uh, naive approach of finding uh, good predictions actually scale. And for this, I built a small benchmark where I am using a random graph because the actual data behind it doesn't matter that much. Um, it's more about uh, how many nodes we have and how fast can we find predictions. So here in our random power law graph, um, which could be a social network uh, in the end using an average degree of five. So each node has five uh, relationships to other nodes. And we also have a node property, which is an embedding of 128 floating point numbers in this case. So we don't need to have any node property steps before. It's just to make this benchmark a bit simpler to understand with and not have a very complex pipeline before. Um, the model that we're using for the prediction is based on logistic regression. So it's a rather fast one to um, to give the prediction compared to random forest, which might be a bit slower. And um, from the parameter side, uh, we are trying to find the best thousand predictions uh, in the input graph and using a concurrency four, which is the uh, maximum of what you can use in community. And on the uh, right side here in the diagram, um, we can see that uh, with a, a graph of 10,000 nodes, um, we can find our predictions in around 10 seconds, but this quickly uh, scales to uh, up to 60 minutes for 100,000 nodes. So maybe 60 minutes is still in the time frame that's uh, good enough for you to find these predictions, but you can easily see that when we want to go into the millions of nodes, we can uh, get to the into hours of uh, one time just to find predictions. And this is not ideal, I would say. So maybe you've al already had this problem before and didn't know how to continue, but in, uh, in GDS, we actually have a way how you can um, find predictions faster. So um, wh what we call is, uh, what we call for this is approximate link prediction. Um, looking on the left, uh, you, you can see the main idea um, that when uh, node A, we think is, uh, uh, is, is good to link with B or C, then um, it might be also very likely that B and C could be a good link to actually check um, if it's a good prediction. And um, because we don't want to just uh, find like triangles or so, or we also have some random um, predictions like between A and D to just avoid being stuck in a optimum uh, local one. So what's actually happening, uh, happening in the approximate link prediction, instead of just picking uh, every combination of node pairs, we are um, finding K candidates per node that uh, are initially just uh, randomly selected, or maybe we are using a random walker or so, that depends on your configuration. And then over multiple iterations, we uh, improve these uh, candidates uh, step by step. So improving these candidates is like um, you're uh, looking for um, A, what, what the current candidates are, and then trying to co combine these between each other. So like finding, uh, finding B and C as a, node pair to try out. And um, then as also mentioned, then we want to use some random uh, node pairs as well to, to explore our search space a bit further. And after each iteration, we check if we improved a lot of candidates or if we are staying the same. If, if we don't change uh, much between iterations, then we know we are done. And we can actually convert these candidates into um, links and return them to the user. Um, so with that main idea of what the approximate link prediction is, let's see how fast can we actually get. And um, what I uh, did then was uh, use the same um, benchmark setup that I showed you before on the exhaustive one, now applying it with the approximate uh, search strategy. And um, as parameters here, we are trying to find the best um, five candidates per node. So it's a bit different than just returning the global best 1000. 
but you could see of transforming the this result also to the best thousands. Um, having a sample rate parameter of uh, 0.5, which I will go into later. And um, what, what we can see in this plot is that we actually have a much better scaling uh, factor. So um, if, from this plot, it looks uh, nearly constant, but when we look uh, deeper into it, it's, it's more linear compared to the quadratic, quadratic behavior before. And what it means for uh, runtime is that actually instead of taking a whole 16 minutes to predict over 1,000 nodes, we just need 38 seconds, which I think is a huge difference, uh, especially when you want to um, apply it to a use case. Um, but as always, there is some trade-off uh, with, with this uh, kind of prediction. Um, you always need to think of, do you want to have the fastest predictions? So uh, fastest could be just uh, the initial set of candidates run no iterations at all and then uh, return this to the users. But these might not be the best predictions. So the best predictions are obviously trying out every combination, every single one there is, as we, uh, as we did in the exhaustive one. And um, you can't get any better with, with this, assuming that, that your model is uh, good enough. So what you can do to test your predictions is uh, that you uh, maybe you reserved some uh, existing relationships before, didn't use them in your training. Then you can uh, try to find the overlap with the prediction that the, models, uh, that the model found. And so you can kind of get an estimate on how good your predictions are. What uh, if it's feasible to run the exhaustive prediction, then I would uh, recommend you that you run this as a baseline once and then uh, see uh, if the approximate is close enough to, to the exhaustive predictions or if you need to run the approximate for maybe more iterations. And um, as a last uh, idea on how you can test the quality of your predictions, is that you look at the model's confidence. So uh, for each link, the the uh, algorithm will also return uh, confidence, uh, which is between zero and one. And if the if the model is very confident in the predictions, then maybe these are already good enough. Um, so with with that in mind, um, I want to show you at last uh, the different things that you can configure with with your approximate uh search strategy which is um maybe you've heard of knn before uh, that's another algorithm that we have in our library we basically use the very similar set of configuration parameters and there's once the sample weight um, which uh, limits the comparisons that we do inside iteration so um, if you have a high sample rate then we uh, do much more um comparisons in, in a single iteration then with a low sample rate, which you can also see on the on the plot on this slide that with um, a sample rate of uh, 0.99, uh, we are taking for 1000 nodes more to 40 seconds compared to when just using sample rate of 0.1, um, we are closer to 30 seconds. So if, if it's, uh, if it's uh, still fast enough to have a size, high sample rate, probably it's better to use a higher one. Maybe you even need uh, fewer iterations compared to having a lower sample rate. So it's not just always use this parameter. You need to uh, try it out yourself, see what works best for you there. And there's the delta threshold, uh, threshold which um, allows a earlier stop. So basically it says, okay, uh, I'm fine with uh, having these many changes between iterations and um, already, already stop instead of uh, really, for instance, um, only stop when there's no single candidate change. And uh, another knob, uh, which is the easiest to understand, I think, is the max iterations. There's a, it's like the upper limit uh, for your time budget. You will never run longer than, for instance, 100, 100 max iterations if you use 100. Um, there are also um, a couple of more, which uh, I would invite you to look at our documentation. Uh, these are just the three ones that I want to highlight in this talk. And um, at very last, to close this talk off of um, what is next. So we are currently uh, looking into different strategies uh, to predict links. So what we're using right now is based on k-nearest neighbors, but there are also other ideas that uh, 
two master CS students that, that we're currently having in our group uh, are looking into, which also look very promising, I can already tell you. So maybe you will see in uh, future versions different uh, strategies that you can use. And what you can do today is that you can um, try out a link prediction pipeline demo that, that we uh, built for you. So you can just run these, uh, run this one yourself and trust your own benchmarks, not trust in my plots that I'm showing you, but actually just try it out yourself and see how fast you can get. Um, you can also look at our source code. What I'm talking about right now is uh, on our open, open uh, source code uh, in the repository. So you can just uh, look at the implementation, try to understand it. And uh, of course, you can ask us questions right now or then also on GitHub or on the community forum and we will try to answer you. And um, with that, I think we are right on time and uh, happy to answer a question or two. Cool. Thank you very much, Florentine. That was uh, super interesting. Uh, and we have time for maybe one one question or so. Uh, so um, I'll have I pick this one here from Ankel. Um, how do you pick the K initial candidates? That seems like a critical step. Uh, um, so there are two samplers that we offer at the moment. There's a uniform where you really just uh, pick randomly across the nodes. And then there's a random walk based where you're basically walking from each node for a couple of steps and then picking one of these. But actually, it's not that important uh, which once you pick initially, you want to have a good distribution across the nodes so that you don't just uh, be stuck in a single community or so. But as you run over multiple iterations, um, you're hoping that independent of what you picked in the start, you will find the best ones in the end. Okay. And yeah, maybe do one more from Sinan uh, came in earlier. Uh, what about nodes with different label where link prediction does not make sense between one label and the other and not within a node label? That's a, that's a very good question, actually, and uh, also a feedback that we receive from many people. And what you can find uh, in the latest version is that we have a label filtered link prediction. So they specify a source label and a target label and only allow um, to predict links over the specific uh, combination. So there's actually also a good way to uh, limit the search space and make it much faster. Cool. All right. I think that gives us uh, enough time for set in for the next speaker. Thank you very much, Florentine. As you said, uh, you are around on the community pages on Discord on other on other channels. So if you have questions uh, on this, uh, um, team will be around to uh, to help and to um, to see if we can support uh, if you are stuck with something or have any other question or feedback. So thank, thank you very you much for having me. Thank you.